Come on in. <laughs> Earlier this year, we won a competition for Hip Camp Canada's best summer job, where we will be traveling while documenting some of Canada's best camping and outdoor stays. And we wanted to take you on the journey with us. playing Tetris in the car, then we're off on the road. Finally finished packing. <laughs> I've organized the car here behind the driver's seat. That's gonna be my camera gear. Back here you have our kitchen, and then in the very middle you have like our tent and sleeping stuff. That's what I like when I'm camping, organization. Me too. Brody too. <laughs> She's a Virgo. <laughs> Bye, Matt. Bye, Andrew. Bye, Matthew. Bye, Brody. Bye, Bye, Liam. Bye, bye. Bye, bye Maui. Bye, homie. This is going to be our longest time of five season now. <laughs> bye, Chai. at Maple Heart Ranch, which is a three and a half hour journey from Vancouver, including the one and a half hour ferry, which takes you from the mainland to the island. We arrived at our first stay, Maple Heart Ranch, and we have a beautiful campsite. We're just walking down the laneway right now. We're gonna go see what's up, because I think there is some horses, judging by the poop on the ground. <laughs> A little ass. <laughs> the unique thing about Hip Camp is that it's locals sharing their land. And we noticed right away that this is very much a working ranch, which is all part of the Hip Camp experience. While we were exploring the trails, we came across a beaver dam, which is great because we are determined to find the great Canadian beaver. Is that the beaver? <laughs> Although our first attempt was unsuccessful. But at least we got to scratch some bellies. <laughs> hey. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what are your friends' names there, buddy? The little guys, Finnegan. Bigger guys, Ferguson. This is what a camping site looks like here on the ranch. There's enough space for two, maybe three cars. You're allowed four guests here. We have our tent set up, our chairs. There's a fire pit here. Every site comes with a picnic table. And then uh, we set up our hammock right there. Perfect little hammock spot. There is an outhouse just about 100 meters down a very scenic road. And then you will have to bring your own water. The site is located just near Shawnigan Lake. The Trans-Canada Trail runs very close to this spot. So if you're hiking along the trail, this is a great spot to stop at. And then once you're here, there is a little trail that goes all the way around the ranch. That's pretty nice for a quick little adventure. It has a very long driveway. It is about a four kilometer dirt road to get here. So you are very much in the middle of nowhere. If you like horses, the owner of the ranch, Connie, can actually provide trail rides. You can book a campsite at Maple Heart Ranch through Hip Camp for a total of $45 a night, piggies included. And massage baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just 20 minutes away from the ranch is a newly opened Malahat Skywalk, where you can enjoy some pretty epic views of the Saanich Inlet and Washington's Mount Baker. Plus, to get down, they even got a slide. Now we're off to our second farm stay. We decided
decided to upgrade our stay from camping to glamping. We were supposed to be camping in a tent, but luckily for us, they just got a schoolie. Did you convert this yourself? No. My wife, this is our registered midwife. Been working in the community for a long time, and basically they created like a non-profit. So this might be one day a mobile ma women's maternity bus. That's the idea. <laughs> now you guys have probably heard there's a lot of institutionalized racism in, within the healthcare system. Totally. Yeah, so a lot of indigenous people in particular just don't want to go to the hospital. They're trying to kind of create more creative possibilities. But for the time being, check it out. Nice. Super nice. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Look at this. They have like little storage under here. So there's our bed for the night. This looks like the communal area. I think Rupert was saying that he like wanted to create this space so that when people are camping here, they have like more of a community feel. So if they're just going through solo or they're here with a group, they can have this like area to chill out and meet people, story tell, like have fun. And there's also a kitchen area that is like for everyone here to use. That's so cool. He said that there was resident elk and deer in the area, so. We gotta stay along the trail and see if we see any friends. The problem with going first is I'm the one who breaks the spider webs. <laughs> I don't like it. Very minimalistic, like just enough room to put down a two man tent here. I don't want to walk through any more spider webs. Rupert mentioned he is a bike packer, so he definitely wanted these spots to be minimalistic as he would being bike packing. Uh, so if you are bike packing, this is a great spot to stay because it is built with that in mind. It's so beautiful in here. There's like moss everywhere. And you have like 12 acres to explore while you're back here. This is the Wild Forest Theater. It's an improv theater. Rupert was saying he has a background in theater, so he teamed up with a local teacher and created this. Yeah, it's a bear. He's looking at us. It's a black bear right there. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's a bear. That is a bear. <laughs> I don't have my zoom lens on, but uh, you can definitely see it. Hey, hey bear. bear! With black bears, you just want to be big and loud. Yeah, and they're scared of you. Hopefully. I love how you're like, we're more scared of spiders than, <laughs> than, <laughs> than a bear. the bear. <laughs> oh, look, a cute bear. Our host, Rupert, gave us a quick tour of his regenerative organic farm. And guess what? More piggies. Morning, piggies. <laughs> Rupert decided to show us what the Couch and Valley had to offer with a guided e-bike tour. Our first stop was the Duncan Farmer's Market, where you can enjoy some live music, crafts, gin, and organic vegetables. I mean, who doesn't want a shot of gin and carrot for breakfast? Check this out, so these are Gary Oaks. There's a Gary Oak Preserve up ahead. But, uh, it's a unique kind of ecosystem within uh, Vancouver Island. Gary Oaks, Brody. Our second stop was Maple Bay, which overlooks Salt Spring Island. It usually doesn't look this hazy, but unfortunately we were there during forest fire season. After stopping by a few local farm stands, we made our way to the third stop at Valley Cider, and due to the fact we were with Rupert, we got a private cider tasting. Since we were in a heat wave, there's no better way to cool down than a river flow. We got the tubes ready. We're in the car. We're on the way to the river. This is a nice little spot to take a dip, but uh, we're going to have our own journey. Speed first. <laughs> we are picking up some speed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What? I just hit a rock on the spot. 
breakfast. Hey, beaver, beaver, beaver. What is that? We were told there was a fat beaver here. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brody and I do not want to leave Shaw Farm. We're coming back. Right, Brody? You get your money's worth just in this float. Priceless. This uh, pipeline here marks the end of our trip. We've been floating for an hour and 15 minutes. So it's uh, definitely worth the five minute drive. Still no beaver. But we did happen to find a bunch of crayfish. <laughs> After we ended the river float, Rupert's family was taking a dip, so we decided to walk back with them. Overall, Shaw Farm was probably one of our favorite stays ever. And for $100 a night, it's an affordable glamping experience. We woke up on a bus. It's nice and warm too. Like yeah. the perfect temperature, really. Hmm. Our island time is over, so we're off to Ontario for our next regenerative stay at Lornwood Farm. Well, our host here is uh, taking us on a ride to our camp spot. It is a massive property, so we're just on this dirt road uh, that is really fun to drive on with this rental, nice clean rental car, because uh, it is definitely not clean anymore. Bad time to open your window. Listen. This is the first spot we've arrived to in like pitch black. It's gonna be exciting waking up because we have no idea what's around us right now. And um, yeah, the next shot, there'll be daylight. Situated on 100 acres of mixed organic produce, livestock, and hardwood bush, Lornwood has something for everyone. This is our host, Eric. We love talking to him and hearing about how he built this garden all by hand for his wife, Deborah to enjoy, which then turned into 20 acres of organic produce and their new way of life, regenerative farming. Regenerative farming is the practice of rebuilding the soil's organic matter that can reverse climate change. In our opinion, this way of farming will save our planet. Eric and Deborah handpick produce every morning to sell at their own farm stand, and from what we saw, they always had a steady flow of people. This is as close as farm to table as it gets. To give you the scale, there's 100 acres here. Mm -hmm. Only 20 of it is open land. So that tells you that 80 acres of the farm, much more of the farm is in forest. What? And that's kind of because Deborah's dad in his time, he was 13. And he said to his dad, hey, uh, I'd like to plant some trees, you know, to try to deal with some of the sand dune. It was just all sand blows. Mm -hmm. And the Ministry of Lands and Forests at that time had a program like, if you will plant a tree, we will subsidize yeah. the planting. And he went out and he planted 30,000 red pines, 20,000 white pines, and 10,000 spruce trees. As a 13-year-old kid, which I kind of just still today find <laughs> amazing and inspiring in a weird way uh -huh. and um like i don't know what you were doing at 13 but i wasn't thinking about planting <laughs> that many trees i was no. thinking of having a girlfriend or something i mean look what he did he yeah. changed the face of the land here forever unfortunately small organic farms like these aren't the most lucrative businesses so most require supplemental income in different forms like hip camp Deborah and Eric have multiple stays on their land that allow them to do what they love, meet new people, and share their regenerative farming practices. For $65 a night, you could camp in their beautiful forest like we did. Or, if you want to turn it up a notch, you could stay in their converted barn loft or secluded cottage. These were our top three farm stays. We really learned a lot from our hosts and think it's pretty important for everyone to know where your food comes from. We find the best way of learning is immersing yourself right in it. Plus, you get to camp at some amazing spots. Hey, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> I'm Andrew. 
I'm Brody. We're doing a 40 day journey across Canada, staying at the best hip camps, and we're really excited to share it with you and show you what our favorites are, what you can expect at these, and just what is hip camp all about. We put a lot of hard work into this, so if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to us. Hopefully, maybe you could stay at one of these hip camps in the near future.